So Judy, can you share with our audience why you were first drawn to serve uh, for the uh, Trump campaign um, within the Economic Advisory Board? I found it refreshing that someone was talking about the impact of shifting exchange rates and currency manipulation on trade flows and, uh, and capital flows. And you remember when, when Trump really started coming on, um, the United States was dealing with whether or not to proceed on the, the Trans-Pacific Trade Partnership. A lot of Americans uh, were not so big on this. There was a backlash against trade. And I don't think it was because Americans don't believe in competition. I don't believe that for a minute. I think they believe in free trade, but a lot of workers, and especially in manufacturing, felt that they had been put at a disadvantage, that it was not a level playing field because of currency shifts. And at the time, they were probably still hurting from what they saw as devaluation by China of its currency. Because China, instead of letting our demand for Chinese products raise the exchange rate of the yuan against the dollar, which would have then made their goods more expensive, they kept it at a lower rate and just accumulated dollar reserves. Mm -hmm. And so that did make it very hard for what you would have expected to play out if we had truly floating right. rates. So we right. didn't see that equilibrating effect. And I think when Trump brought that up and said it's not protectionist to point out that everyone should play by the same rules. Mm -hmm. And he said currency manipulation is unfair. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, finally we're talking about that. Right. Well, you know, you, you're, you're making a point that we need to trust the dollar. Yeah. Um, can you give us a quick history overview of how we, we came to this? You know, we used to trust it, but why is there mistrust now? When the Federal Reserve came into effect in 1913, we were still on a gold standard. And the whole purpose of having the Federal Reserve was to ensure that seasonally banks ran out of cash. You know, think we were more of an agricultural economy in the first part of the last century. Farmers didn't have a lot of cash when they, they needed to plant, but then after the harvest they had tons. And the idea was if you had an elastic currency supplied by a central bank, then you could always make it possible for banks to have sufficient money to keep things smooth and not have a panic because they suddenly couldn't, couldn't pay out cash. But it wasn't until the 30s and the middle of the Depression when other countries went off the gold standard when in retaliation we started applying tariffs and these protectionist measures. Um, in the U.S., uh, under Roosevelt, we devalued our own dollar and would, it, prior to that it had been convertible at a fixed rate and we devalued it in one fell swoop by the government but also then said you can't use gold. Mm -hmm. We were sort of forcing the legal tender. And I think the Federal Reserve progressively became more powerful. Today it's quite unhealthy. We have a fixation, it's, it's a wag the dog scenario where instead of people making decisions based on should I invest, does that make sense, and, and taking risk into account, financial investment is much more dictated by did, did Yellen blink when she said we're going to continue with um, extremely accommodative policy. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we're so locked into the nuances that I think we've lost the transparency of money just being meaningful to people and, and people feeling like this is my store of value, I can count on it. It's now a game for people who can watch CNBC four hours a day mm -hmm. to interpret what it all means. Right, where the next, the other dollar versus this other dollar is going. Yeah, right, right. Exactly. Well, you know, you talked about in a recent panel you just had uh, the fact that Trump recognized something. He has an instinct for something. What do you mean by it? Well, he was asked, and he, I think he was genuinely surprised uh, by the question. He was at a town hall even months before he was an officially declared candidate. And someone in the audience asked him, what do you think of the Federal Reserve? And he very candidly said, well, some Republicans think they do a good job, that they try to steer the economy just a little bit, smooth out the cycles. He said, but other people want to get rid of it. And he said, I definitely think we should audit it, but I haven't made up my mind how I feel about the Federal Reserve. Interesting. And then someone followed that up and said, do you ever see any kind of scenario where we would go back to a gold standard? Now, you know, what do you mean by that? But let's just say any kind of a goal-linked, disciplined monetary policy. And Trump said, you know, there was something very, very nice 
about that idea that we were a very, very solid country, he said solid, when we were on a gold standard. And I believe by that he meant in the 50s and 60s, which was during the time the dollar was convertible into gold under an international monetary agreement, mm -hmm. Bretton Woods, which then anchored a fixed exchange rate system. And sure enough, during those two and a half decades, roughly, which I think is a reference point for making America great again, like it was then in right. the leave it to beaver era maybe, um, that was a time of exceptionally good, solid growth. It was a time of amazing gains from labor productivity. And those gains go to workers. Those gains go to middle income citizens. And during that same era, we saw a, a closing of the gap between the wealthiest Americans and middle class. So that was a shared gain from the economic growth. And so when he said we were more solid, I think even in that sense, that, that we had a shared stake in, in being Americans because as we did well as a nation, the middle class benefited. It wasn't just people at the top. Right. And now I think where we're so fixated on financial market performance and this low cost monetary policy has made it very easy if you're an investor to take a margin loan and, and maximize the amount you have invested. Um, it's great if you're already wealthy. You can mm -hmm. buy financial assets or companies can buy back their own shares and we've seen the market go up. But we're not seeing gains to labor. Mm -hmm. We're not seeing gains in productivity. We're not seeing the kind of economic growth that we had back then. Yeah, and that raises standards of living for everyone right. based on a real increase in the quality of life through improved goods and services at a lower price. Well, do you believe that Trump has what it takes to do these things? I think he has the demeanor and the will. We see how tough it is to do anything. I think he needs uh, real initiatives and he needs to see broad support mm -hmm. and get a sense that the public wants that. He, he can't rock the boat too much, maybe. This will be his first decision of who is the next Fed chair. He doesn't want to cause a meltdown in markets. At the same time, he can begin to introduce this element of questioning whether the Fed's model works. Have we really solved the problem? If there is another crash, aren't we going to be in worse shape than we were with that one? Are we going to go to negative interest rates? Because that undermines the morality of democratic capitalism. Right. And uh, I think I think he might feel compelled to take up these big questions and, and push hard to mm -hmm. do something. I mean, he's a disruptor. And, oh, yeah. And we need, we need a disruptive voice on the Fed as well. Well, moving on, what do you see to expect uh, from the Treasury going forward? Well, I think we're already seeing a new emphasis on the importance of exchange rate stability mm -hmm. and a international monetary system that provides a foundation for productive growth. So just getting the language in. Uh, it used to be you, uh, Treasury would always say, we want a strong dollar. Well, if you mean a dependable dollar, yes. But let's say dependable dollar, because President Trump actually understands the impact of a strong or a weak dollar on economic performance. And, and he said the only thing great about a strong dollar is it sounds good, mm -hmm. but in fact it can, it can cause us problems as well. Right. So, so I think we'll see more of a focus. I would like to see that lead to some other initiatives. Mm -hmm. I'm doing my best, but um, I, I can't promise. And right. it depends on the timing and the necessity. Right. Now to, to lastly close and to basically package your case for an international monetary system, uh, what is your, I guess, counterpoint when someone's very strongly is against a solid fixed system? I guess my point is if you believe in free markets, then the way free markets work is they convey prices through money to people, demand and supply. So everybody knows what this price is relative to something else. If you have competitive goods and one money is a currency that is, is now moving relative to the way a competitive good from another country, its currency, then how are you really getting a sense of the true competitive value? Where do you, what, which one do you buy? And I think that um, you need monetary clarity if you want free markets to convey actual value in a logical way that, that the people who come to the marketplace can make 
rational decisions. Mm -hmm. So I suppose someone who is against that can't possibly, then I say, look, well then, we're, we're thinking if, differently yeah, here. Yeah, <laughs> if you don't believe in free markets, okay. then, then you might as well go to managed economies, you might as well go back to the Soviet model mm. and let the government dictate what people should want and what people mm. should have. But if you want to have opportunity, if you want to have even a rule of law approach that, that the unit of account is inviolable, we all know how we're counting, we're all playing by the same rules, I don't see how people can argue against it despite the fact that maybe they just don't want to go there. Right. But if you challenge them, I think, um, and they're intellectually honest, they have to say there is an inconsistency there with mm -hmm. the principles of free trade in the Adam Smith sense. Right. Well, thank you so much for, for this interesting conversation, Judy. Thanks for asking me. Enjoyed talking with you.